All right, guys, uh, Coach Steve and I, today we're going to talk about goal setting, the idea muscle, 10 ideas a day, the importance of that. Uh, Coach Steve and I were just briefly talking about, um, basically he's asking me how many goals do I have personally, and I, I told him a basic number, and then he told me a number that was basically 10 to 50 times that of what it probably should be. Um, so, Stephen, go ahead and go into basically why, how many goals do you really need to have set? Why is that important? Why are you saying 5,000 goals. Right, just so good. Goal setting. <laughs> yeah, goal setting. A lot of times we either have like pain to goal setting because we've tried in the past and we failed, right? So then setting a goal now is associated to pain because we think we can't do it or we get caught in how, like how is that going to happen? So we don't even really commit and go for it because subconsciously, like underneath, we have a doubt that we're actually going to follow through or be able to make it happen, have the, the resources, the ways and means to make it happen. So the thing I was, I was posing was like, uh, how, you know, if you took from now to the next 30 years, how, what, what do you want to accomplish in 30 years? You know, a lot of times we have like three or four goals or, you know, Tyler even said you're more than average, like way more than average. You said you have a list of over 50 goals, you know? So that's, that's every goal that you set has an image attached to it. And our life is just a reflection of our images of our mind. And so the more images, the more uh, material that your mind has to work with, the more you're going to create the experience. And a lot of times, like the biggest problem that I've seen just in my, my, my own process and then people I've worked with is setting like a strictly a financial goal, right? Like I want this amount of money and that's what you focus on and it's repetitive, but there's not a lot of other images associated to that, right? It's like, what, what's the lifestyle you're actually going to have? when you have that amount of money, or say you want to make a million or a billion dollars, right? You want to become a billionaire. What is the lifestyle of a billionaire, right? There's hundreds of thousands of images associated to the lifestyle of being a billionaire, not so much with a billion dollars, right? Like a billion dollars cash, that doesn't have much life to it. There's not an image of that. It's just a number and a digit in a computer somewhere or like cash that's sitting there. It's not, there's not a lot of images on that. So you're, while you have one goal, like someone who just has a strictly financial goal, say they want to be a billionaire. And then there's another person who, who dreams of the lifestyle of what that billion dollars would give them. Say it's private jets. It's, it's a nice house, right? Really nice cars, maybe a boat or a yacht. There's a pool, right? Maybe uh, luxury vacations, you know, the, the type of clothing you're going to wear, like the type, like the way your house is landscaped, like every little detail creates a new image. So you know, when we were talking, like you said, you have 50 goals and my goal is to have 5,000 goals, like 5,000 little pieces of imagery of details that I can feed my mind and give to my subconscious. So that way it's reflected back in my, as my life experience, right? So a lot of times, and, you know, setting these goals that have these hard and fast deadlines, that, that's another mistake I see people make is like so rigid in the, in the time frame. Mm -hmm. But, but who makes that time frame? Like who makes that up? You know, we're just making it up. Say you want to have a, a you know, $10,000 in a year or not. That, that's not that much. Say it's a hundred thousand or whatever the number is that you want in a year. Why is it a year? Like, why do you give yourself that much time? What if it could happen in a month? Right. Like, you know, so don't limit yourself. Like don't restrict the amount of time because you're, you, who knows what we're capable of. Right. You know, a lot of times we live in that limitation of like, we, we think we know what we're capable of. So we don't actually set a major massive goal because it makes us a little uncomfortable for our limitation. Mm -hmm. And unless we're willing to give up that part of ourself, like that's the sacrifice you make is divorce that limiting part of yourself and marry the truth of what your potential is, right. and what you're truly capable of. We're in charge of our own goals. Like we literally set the limits for what is, as low as it's going to be, as high as it's going to be. So there's really no rules. It's all up to us. And that's what a lot of people think. It's just like society pl places those rules on us or our family or friends. But that's not you. Like you set your own goals. You set your own rules and limitations. It's like we don't have to rely on anything else around us to set those limitations. And if you do, you're just holding yourself back ultimately. Mm -hmm. And yeah, there's three major categories. So like a lot of people start with like three goals and there's like, there's health, wealth, and relationships, mm -hmm. you know? So your health, like, why do you want a, a 20 pounds of extra muscle? Why do you want to lose 30 pounds of body fat? It's something that's going to give you, it's going to give you a feeling. It's going to give you a lifestyle. You're going to have a new identity in who you are. 
Like that's why you want that. You want all the stuff that's going to bring you that peak physical body or peak physique that you're going to create. Like that's going to give you something. So focus on what that's giving you because then the work to create the peak physique is not really work. Mm -hmm. you're, you're doing it for an outcome. You're doing it to get to the other side of that threshold to cross that bridge of fear or doubt or insecurity, right? right. You're doing it for a purpose, for an outcome. So focus on the outcome. That'll get you there. That'll get you through the hard, hard times. And you don't feel like showing up and you feel like, you know, cheating with food or, or, or varying from the diet. Like it, it's all because you want an outcome, right? Right. If you want financial goals, it's all, it's the same thing. Like you want the finances so you can have the lifestyle to create a lot of different images in your world, create a lot of different experiences. Mm -hmm. Same thing with a relationship, right? Like deep connection, meaning that's all built in a relationship and it's a reflection. Like if you, if you have relationship goals, it's to like grow as a person so you can become the person that attracts the, the mate that you want, yeah. you know? It's like, it's still self, it's still a goal, but, you, but there's deeper fulfillment that'll create imagery that we want to experience as our life experience. Right. right. Because your life, it's just images of your mind. Right. So, you know, moving, kind of moving in what we talked about last time is 10 ideas a day. The reason that serves your idea muscle, because it, it forces your mind to come up with new images. You're, you're just, you have an abundance of images and you can pick through. Like if you have read 10 magazines, you're going to see way more choices of images that re relate to you than if you read one magazine. Mm -hmm. So same thing with your ideas. If you have one idea to solve a problem that may or may not work. It, it may or may not be brilliant. Odds are it won't be, right? But if you have 10 to choose from, okay, maybe one out of 10, you'll, you'll get right, you know, but that you increase the odds because you're more prolific. Mm -hmm. So the idea, you know, the greats weren't great because they were born great, right? They were great because they did it a lot. Mm -hmm. Just they were prolific, right? Picasso painted thousands of paintings, but what? A 10 were good, five are highly valued. Mm -hmm right? But thousands of art pieces of art. So that's where ideas, you know, 10 ideas a day, that's 3000 or more ideas a year. Like you're more likely to come up with one out of 3000. Right. You're, you're right. Then you are with, you know, one out of two or one out of five. Right. So and just kind of going back to focus on the outcome instead of like maybe the investment in something that just kind of goes back into just choosing someone for a, a personal like fitness program or uh, exercise regimen. It's like most people, they freak out about the investment of the money, but you got to realize like, that's just the investment. That's, that's where the, the least amount of work goes in. That's where the least amount of your mental space should go to. It's all about the outcome. So of course it's going to be investment, but don't look at the investment, look at the outcome, look at what's going to happen. Look what, how much your life is going to change because of the steps we're going to take for that outcome. It's not about the investment, which yes, investment hurts, but you're investing in yourself. You're looking at the outcome. You're doing all this because of the outcome where you're going to get to. I mean, you're going to get to the point where your joints don't hurt anymore. You have constant energy. Your libido is going to be through the roof. Your mindset's going to completely change. Like who you are as a person is going to completely change. And everyone else around you in your life is going to be completely changed because of it. It's the outcome. You're going for the outcome, not the investment. Um, but getting back more into the, um, the, the 10 ideas a day, basically, how would you recommend someone kind of draws, how, how do they start making 10 ideas a day? Because we all got a lot of stuff going on. I mean, we got our lives, our families, our businesses. Yeah. Um, so how would you say to someone who isn't used to kind of making even one idea a day or two ideas a day, how would they work up to making 10 ideas a day and making that 10 into 20 ideas a day, 30, 40, 50, and just keep going from there? Like, how does someone start doing that? Um, so the first thing I've heard about this from James Altucher. So I got to give credit to James because he's... <laughs> kind of the originator of this but um you know when he was he, he he became a day trader and you know he didn't know what he was doing it was the early it was the late 90s and he was trading stocks and he was in the internet boom and then he went bust he lost like a million dollars a week for for like the summer of 2000 and he was just basically on the floor didn't know what to do and i've been there like down and out depressed um you know just very dark places right we don't we feel like we have no hope fall into despair. There's things that don't go, don't go our way. So he was, I mean, I've never even dreamed of losing a million dollars a week, but for him, you know, and this is what he said he did to get back up off the floor, like just to keep some hope and moving in the right direction. Um, he recommended getting a, uh, a notepad. So I just have these guest checks hmm. sitting around. You can get like 10 of them for like a dollar mm -hmm. on a wholesale restaurant website. 
and just start recording any ideas. And his big thing was that it doesn't have to be even be good ideas, just an idea. It's a, he, his thing was almost make 10 bad ideas a day. Mm -hmm. Because if you have bad ideas, you're going to start having good ideas, but it's the practice, just like your, your physical muscles. If you don't exercise for a week, your muscles start to atrophy, mm -hmm. right? Your mental muscle, your idea muscle will atrophy over two or three days you, if you don't exercise it. So most of us, we don't exercise that idea muscle on a daily basis. And so just the way you would um, do X3 training, which for, is your physical body, it's physical training, you want to exercise your idea muscle every day. So start with writing a list of 10 things. And he actually has a, um, it's called uh, notepad.com without the A. So it's N-O-T-E-P-D.com, notepad without the A. And it's a way to start practicing building ideas and then sharing them with a community. And that's the part of the whole idea of mastermind is you're sharing ideas and you're tapping into other people's uh, skill set and potential brain power. But with this, start building it yourself. Like start writing one or two or three and then work your way up to 10. The idea is you want to make your brain sweat. Yeah. You know, you want it to be challenging. You want it to be hard. Like everyone can come up with three or four ideas, five ideas, maybe six, six. That's easy. But if you want to get to seven, eight, nine, ten, 10 and really complete the list, you got to, you got to think a little differently. You have to form new, new pathways. So right. that that's the practice. So it's, they're not meant to keep either. They're not meant to like be given away and, and, and shared. I throw them out mostly, mm -hmm. you know, we just throw them out. But the, the idea is to keep practicing it every day. But with Notepad, uh, you can share it and then you can see other people's ideas. So right. it's like a community of sharing it. Um, but that's how I would start. Just get, you don't even need a, a, a guest check. It took me like two years to get these things. I just started with a journal. You know, I had a little spiral bound notebook that was about three by five mm -hmm. and just wrote 10 things, you know, that's it. Just 10 things on one, one topic or 10 mm -hmm. things you could cross 10 industries that haven't been combined, you know, like mm -hmm. it's, it's just a fun game. You can even make 10 ideas about an idea list, right? It's just a fun game to keep your brain active and engaged. And that's, um, I've heard Tony uh, Robbins talk on his uh, podcast with Dr. Dia, Peter Diamandis, who wrote that book, Life Force. Mm -hmm. And they talk about like keeping your brain active is one of the best ways to fight dementia and Alzheimer's. Right. It's just keeping your brain active and, and reading and writing mm -hmm. and thinking of new new ideas and creative ways of, of uh, approaching problems. Right, and that's a really good point. Like just like your muscles atrophy when you stop working them out for a, over a week or so, same thing happens with your brain. It's a muscle just like anything else. I really love that point. Because I've noticed like if I let myself kind of slip and now normally I don't let myself get very lazy at all because I'm always doing something, I'm always working. But I have noticed like in the past when I kind of stopped thinking about new ideas, stopped trying to push myself to try new things, learn new things, my brain would start to atrophy. Like it was harder to actually pick up the new information. Um, and that, that was my problem for years and years. I was not able to kind of, when I would read something or watch a movie or just anything, read a book, I couldn't comprehend what I was watching, what I was reading. And that's just because my, obviously it was because of diet, I had a lot of brain fog going on, but it was also because my, my muscle, my brain was just kind of atrophied. I wasn't able to comprehend the information because I didn't practice it enough. So once I started practicing it more, then I noticed just like my muscles on my body, which I always cared so much about. Now my brain muscle started improving as well. Like that's huge. And a mentor of mine, um, I thought it was a kind of a silly idea at first when he told me about it, but actually it's very, very smart. He told me to get a really nice leather bound uh, notebook. This is my personal notebook that I'm going to write all my ideas in just every single day. It doesn't matter if it's just one idea, one thought, it does not matter. Just write down that one thought, that one goal, every single day that I have, whatever, I, whatever I'm thinking, just write it down because our minds are crazy. Like, yes, I've, I've kind of perfected the ability to kind of categorize things in my mind, put things in different shelvings, but still i can't i can't keep all this information in and it's still a little bit randomized so when you're writing everything down like that's huge that's going to help you so much because it is hard to just be having all these ideas and just keep them in your mind and you're going to forget like you, there's one idea that's going to kind of go back to the back of your mind you get another idea that's going to go to the back of your mind because we can't think of too many ideas at once and um it, it just gets a little messy so basically you just write it down every single day you go back over that notebook every single day and you just pick through, like you said, even if it's 10 ideas and there's one good one inside there, pick that one idea, put that to the top of the list, and then just start thinking about that more. And just every page you go through of all your 10 ideas, 
pick the best one, put them all together on another page. And then out of that page, out of those 10 good ideas, there may still be only one or two good ones out of that. And then you just build off that idea. So I really liked what my mentor was telling me, just write it down every single day, whatever goal you have, write it down and spend the money on a nice leather notebook that you're going to be proud of. Like that, that baby is going to be worth some money one day, because I mean, you are going to probably become a, a probably well into the six figures or at least a millionaire, probably just with all those ideas. And if you're constantly using those ideas every day, taking the steps towards um, where those ideas are going to get you. I mean, it can make you very, very wealthy one day. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, just the average person, uh, if you have a great goal, if you have a great product that a lot of people are going to be interested in and you find a way to market that correctly and really believe in your product, I mean, you're going to do very well one day. It's just a matter of meeting the right people, getting it done, having the right ideas. Um, that's what it's all about. So yeah. I thought that was silly at first, but it, it really works. It's real. Yeah, it's real. I mean, that's the thing with James. He, he lost all that money and he's made a fortune since then. Right. Like, all those ideas led to him writing books, writing like right now we could list. You could make a, a list right now of 10 uh, courses that you could teach. 10 articles that you could write. Right. right. He's got speaking engagement. He's wrote books from these ideas that have made him well more than he's lost. Mm -hmm. like he's, he's very well off, right? And, you know, and there's always new opportunity. There's new emerging technologies that are coming to the world right now. I mean, there's more opportunity now than there's ever been. Right. So now's the time to start. I mean, you haven't lost anything. Mm -hmm. We're in inning zero. We haven't even started this game yet. Yep. You know, I mean, if you look at a, at a nine inning game, we're in the first inning, we're in the very first inning, you mm -hmm. know, of, of opportunity, which is with different markets and new emerging technologies. So the, the practice is having that built up. So you're in momentum, mm -hmm. right? And I love what you said too, about writing it down, clears your head, mm -hmm. right? A lot of stress and anxiety comes from trying to remember all this stuff. And then we have one, two, three, many, right? There's so many that we can't remember. We can't, we don't do anything. Mm -hmm. So we don't take any action, right? The action is what receives. Mm -hmm. So the action of writing something down, the action of getting it out of your head and onto a piece of paper now you can reflect it back to your mind and there's space in your mind. Mm -hmm. Like if your cup is already full, you can't keep filling it up. There's nothing, there's no room for any more to go, mm -hmm. right? You have to kind of empty the cup. And that's what the 10 idea practice has done for me. It just allows me to brain dump, empty my cup now. So my mind is clear and then I can actually be present to mm -hmm. what shows up, like what new ideas come in because of that, what new opportunities come in right? Because the universe doesn't like avoid space, right? So if you have all these thoughts floating around your mind, your cup is full. There's that's, that's it. There's no movement or, or, uh, you know, flow on that front. You're not really getting anything new. There's no, there's no new ideas coming in because it's full. But once you dump onto the, onto the pad and you get it out of your brain, now there's nothing, there's a void space. There's, it's empty. So now an empty cup can be filled with something. Mm -hmm. you know so getting outside right exercising getting more blood flow to the brain like all those things are very important um but writing this down allows you to empty your cup so then you can um, receive all the benefits of your physical practice doing right. x3 and following good nutrition and that and i like what you're saying about like this is the first inning like a lot of people think just because covid happened because the world kind of shut down like no one has money it's over we're all starting from square one but people still are doing well. There's still a lot of people out. Yes, a lot of people were severely affected. A lot of people truly don't have a lot of money out there, but there still is people with money. There is still is people. I mean, you can grow your business. You can get it done. You just have to find the right clientele, the right people. Yeah, um, it's but the right, I, exactly the right people, right? Because right. there's abundance. There's the same amount of money. There's even more money now. Right. There's more money. There's more money in the marketplace. Right. But where is it? Right. Like, right. like what it's going to different things because our priorities change. Mm -hmm. And that's where we get back to goal setting. Like, don't focus on the money. That's a, that's a medium. Mm -hmm. That's just the bridge. Like you don't build a bridge connecting to nothing. You, you know, there's a starting point and there's point B mm -hmm. like the bridge connects a and B. Right. Mm -hmm. But so many, so many people focus on the bridge. Like that's just the gateway. Mm -hmm. That's not the actual thing. That's not, that should not be your goal. The goal is point B. What's the lifestyle. What's the image. What's the thing you're going to create. You know, right. what, what type of clothes do you have? What are you going to plant in your garden? What kind of car are you going to drive down to the very last detail? What kind of house are you going to live in? You know, things like that, that are a byproduct of the wealth that we're, you know, a lot of times we fixate on the, the wealth, like the number, 
mm -hmm. money or the thing that we think will get us to what we actually want. But it's like, just ask for what you want. <laughs> Don't worry about how, you know, like that's another thing is setting the how off to the side. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how it's going to work. You have to trust, you have to have faith. You have to decide and commit. Those are the two things. Mm -hmm. Are you sick and tired of how it is? That's all you got to do. Decide yep. to be different. I mean, you got to the point where it's like, you're so upset and frustrated that you finally say, no matter what happens, I just decide I'm going to be happy. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm just going to, I'm just going to be happy. <laughs> I'm going to decide, right? Just like, just the way you would shift your state and become happy, regardless of the circumstance, we can shift our state and become wealthy, regardless of the circumstance. Like, right. you know, one thing I went to a Tony Robbins event and Pitbull is, his, is one of his like high profile clients. And he performs at like every event that he goes to. And we were in LA and I, I, I had this moment of epiphany. He was on stage and he said he moved from a place like Pitbull grew up in Miami and he was like very poor and then he made it in the music industry and he's very successful now, but he made an epiphany where one time he realized money, you either have it or you don't. So he just decided to have it. Mm -hmm. So just decide, like have it, be the person who has it. Right not the person who doesn't. And that's just a decision. That's a state, that's an emotional state. But we're so at the effect, like society, most of us are conditioned to be at the effect of what the circumstances tell us to be. Mm -hmm. Like we're, we're affected by the circumstance, whatever the market says, whatever the, the feedback is from the clientele or the, or the coach or whatever is giving us the way to feel. Right. But what we fail to realize is that our state in the present moment is what's creating the future. Right. So whatever we're getting presently in the circumstances that we are experiencing now, that's a result of who we used to be. That was the past thought and action that we did to create the current circumstance. So if we let the circumstance of now determine our state, we're just perpetuating that for more into the future. So the, the hard work initially up front until you build the momentum, which is why 10 ideas helps you get momentum mm -hmm. because you got to build the momentum of managing your state regardless of the circumstance right like tapping into the power of your physiology and your focus and your language and your meaning right to manage your your emotional mental emotional state regardless of what the physical circumstances tell you right the society yeah. so the social we're socialized to feel a certain way based on experiences so right and I was guilty of it even. I mean, when COVID, when we were in the thick of COVID, I was guilty of it. I'm just like, man, because COVID's going on, most people are not going to be able to afford my program. What am I going to do? So I was just looking at the circumstances and I was worrying too. But and then I started realizing that still, there's still abundance out there. You just have to find the right people. They're like, the, like Stephen said, the money is still out there. We still can find business. Don't get caught up in the current, certain, uh, in the current circumstances because there still is more. I was doing that every single day. I was worrying, man, like COVID's happening. No one's got any money. I'll never find any business. No one's going to want to get any coaching. But that was just a condition I was putting in my mind. It's not true. Like, yeah, there's a situation going on with a lot of people who don't have money, but there's still a lot of people with money out there. There's still a lot of people who can afford to enhance their lives, to get training. So I was just conditioning my mind with the current situations going on that that was true, but it was kind of true, but it, it almost at the same time wasn't because there's still people out there who can afford it. Yeah. Well, the truth is they're both true. Right. With the, they're both out, they're both true. Every right. story, anything you can imagine is true. Mm -hmm. What do you choose to feed? What do you give, what do you give more attention and energy and emotional investment to, mm -hmm. right? Because we're going to find proof for whatever we believe. Yep. All the proof is available. So you find proof to validate what you're believing or what you're telling yourself, right? And a belief is just a conditioned thought, right? It's just a thought that's been conditioned emotionally into your body. Mm -hmm. So... And it's a repetitive thought. Most 90% of our thoughts are just repetitive. Right. Right. You know, so it's like, if we could just tap into the power of what we're thinking to affect our state in the moment, it's creating our future. That's, I mean, there's another goal, right? Emotional states. Like what, what do you want to experience? Where do you want to live emotionally? Right. Right. So yeah, this is, this is really good stuff. <laughs> I, I mean, this is life-changing, right? Because you, it really gives you the power back. And the money aspect, right? You were saying, oh, there's a lot of people struggling with COVID and there's a lot of people who aren't, but though every, like the money, the bridge, that's a reflection of your own internal value. Mm -hmm. Like, so the money is an external representation of something we're holding internally, mm -hmm. right? And so when we work on our ideas, create more 
images in our mind. Now we're focused. We're not focused on the money. That's a bridge to get to what we want. So most people don't create the, which is funny because the, the goal of having a big financial goal, most people don't create that anyway. Mm -hmm. So why do they, why are they defending like a way to, uh, oh, my goal is to make a million dollars and that's your only goal, but you're not focused on the lifestyle it's going to give you or the images that it's going to create in your life. Most people don't get the million dollars anyway. Mm -hmm. Like you're, why, why not be open to a new way of setting the money off to the side using it as a medium and an exchange, but that's not where your focus is and focusing on the outcome and the, on what it's gonna actually create, right? Now, all of a sudden you, you're living richly, you're living in abundance because that abundant part of yourself that sees everyone has enough to afford what they want. Mm -hmm. Like that's a belief I have, everyone has enough to afford what they want. Mm -hmm. Like a crack addict has never said, oh, I guess I just won't have crack today. <laughs> I'll just, just, I'll just find go, a way. I don't have any money. That's that's amazing. Even crackheads, they literally find a way. That is their biggest goal. That's what they want. They want the drugs. They want the crack. So they're going to do whatever they have to do to make it happen. So why can't you do that with your own business and your own lifestyle when you're already making it pretty well? Yeah. I mean, you don't say like, oh, I don't have the money. I guess I won't do it today. <laughs> right. Like, no, they're resourceful. The like everyone, everyone has the money for what they want. Right. 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 And right. we're not needs. Everything we need is within us now. What do we want? What's the desire? What's the fire burning? that you can't put out that keeps calling you day after day after day that's not giving up that's not relentless it's a small voice right like in your heart what's the calling that you have and what 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 tools do you need to get there like how do how do we get there what do you want to create most people are so conditioned to, for what they don't want that they just create more of it you have to recondition your mind build momentum 10 ideas a day builds momentum 10 ideas because now you're conditioning for what you do want Mm -hmm. Right. Most people allow negativity or doubt to creep in because there's no, there's nothing else being more energized. There's mm -hmm. just, like I said, a void space. The universe doesn't like void, So negativity will show up in the absence of positivity, mm -hmm. in the absence of intentionally creating and designing it like weeds grow automatically. <laughs> you don't need to plant them and like curate your garden for weeds to crop up. Right. If you want to plant something intentionally, you have to curate the garden. Mm -hmm. And that's what most people fail to do is get enough emotional uh, juice built up into the reasons why they must do it and all the things they want to create. If you have 5,000 things you want to create and make happen, like that's consuming your mind. There's no room for doubt or negativity. You have so much of your mind filled with what you want. Mm -hmm. You just move in that direction automatically. It's not even thought process becomes who you are because it moves to your unconscious yep yeah just even in my own life like i'm so busy all the time i have so many goals so many things i want to get done of course i have little negative thoughts that come in here and there but they're just overpowered by the things i have to literally do in the moment so i just forget about it so it's just part of it's just being busy enough making yourself busy enough following those goals so you literally have no time no mental space for even those negative thoughts like of course they're always going to be there a little bit but just don't spend time on them don't, don't even pay them any mind because they're not going to help you. They're not going to serve you. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And they're always going to be there, right? Action always trumps fear. Mm -hmm. If you can take action, you'll probably get out of fear. Right. But a lot of times fear will prevent us from taking action. <laughs> right. So it's like, okay, master that fear is always going to be with us, but let's reassociate instead of it being a negative thing. Maybe it says, pay attention. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's something important here you should look at. Right. So you shift your relationship with it. And rather than letting it rule you and control you and don't take any action, you take action despite fear, mm -hmm. right? You can take action, even if you're afraid, it's okay. Let it, let it teach you something, you know, and I'm not saying I'm perfect at this. Like I have fear every day, mm -hmm. right? But that's why the practice is so important because everyone is going to have fear. Like as long as we're human, I think we're going to have some fear around the unknown, right? Around the new frontiers, around the, the, the way the world is going, whatever. We're going to have fear. So learning the skill of learning to manage fear or work with it mm -hmm. is, the, is like the most valuable thing. Take action despite fear. Use it as a motivator. You know? And, and the big and the thing you do yeah. that is condition it. Go ahead. Yep. I was just saying oh. we condition it in. Um, the big thing too is just like the investments only get larger. Like the first investment is just kind of investing in your health having a good meal plan dialed in, how you're going to eat, having workout regimen dialed in. 
Like that's only the first investment. Obviously before that, you got to get your mindset in place. But I mean, once you get your health in check, I mean, then you, if you want to try to grow your business, it's even more of an investment. So if it's hard for you to invest just a couple thousand or so into a program to get coached, I mean, that's just the first step. Like, yeah, it's uncomfortable to be spending that much um, for a program if that's what it is. But then when you're going to the next step of investing in your business, guess what? It's going to be thousands and thousands more. And the, the further and further you get in your business, it's going to be thousands and thousands more instead of that. So it's, it's all in perspective, basically. So yeah, right. it's uncomfortable. I'm uncomfortable investing in myself sometimes, but I have to do it. Like me hiring marketing agencies to take over all the ads spent, all the ads and everything for me running everything, running my social media and everything. Eventually, like I'm going to have, I'm going to be so busy. I'm not going to have time to do all that myself. So I need to invest in other companies to do that for me. So it's uncomfortable. It's still uncomfortable for me, but I do it because I know it's going to get me farther along. So you make a small investment, then you got to make a bigger investment. You make a little more money, you got to make a bigger, bigger investment. It literally just all cycles back into yourself and your business. And you just keep growing yourself more and more step by step. So I'm going through the same steps myself in my business that a lot of people are going through with their health and fitness. Make a little investment, get there. And then you got to make another investment. You got to make another investment. Just keep growing and growing. That's, that's how it's going to work. Mm -hmm. Well, I love what you're saying about investment too, mm -hmm. right? Because words, the language that we talked about last time, what about someone who asked what the cost, how much does it cost? What's the cost on this? Mm -hmm. That's a, that's a certain mindset. Yeah. What's the cost if you don't? That's the, the mindset, right? Exactly. That's the true cost, right? Right. But that's another mindset shift because most people think, oh, cost in terms of money, mm -hmm. if I have to pay for something, but you're saying investment. So if you're going to invest, what's the return on that? What's right. the return on your investment? How much money do you hope to make because of this? Right. Even if it's a health offer. Mm -hmm. it's, it's been statistically shown that people who are in shape make more money than people who are overweight. There's a reason for that. They're more driven. You know, I mean, so, so like, again, pattern of focus, it's short-term pain, mm -hmm. maybe giving up a few thousand dollars, right? But that's going to happen anyway, because you're going to buy what you want. <laughs> right you could buy you're gonna end up spending that on medications and stuff in the healthcare system anyway. or that or you could buy a tv right like what <laughs> you know what i mean like people get what they want right. but if they're committed to growth if they're committed to their best self like what's the potential on who you can become mm -hmm. that's the thing that most people are, are missing like what do you hope to earn in the next 10 years if you're vi have vibrant health and you're like super strong in your body and you're more confident when you go talk to people and your mental uh, acuity is very sharp so you're able to speak clearly and influence people like what's that worth you know i mean how much money could you would could you earn if you had three or four extra clients a week or like two more deals a month for the next 10 months what's i mean right so the focus there is on the return and what you could create potentially mm -hmm. so you're betting on yourself most people won't step up with an investment into themselves because they don't feel that they have their own back Mm -hmm. they're not going to follow through on their own commitments because they have a pattern in the past of, of letting, letting down. Right. Like it's tough. Cause if you so put the again. work in, you're going to get it done. If you invest that money in yourself, whether it's for yourself, like personally for your health or your business, and you put the work in, you're going to get it done. It's not going to be a wasted investment. Even if it kind of doesn't work out, even if you tried your best, those skills you learn from doing that, that is going to serve you for when you try again. Like if I, if I lost everything today, if something crazy happens, I lost everything today. It would really suck. And I've said this in another um, episode before, but I have the tools now that I know how to get right back on the horse. I know exactly what to do to get me right back there again. And I could do it probably within a year or less because I have the tools now to do that. So it's all in here. It's what you learn. It's the knowledge you have, the mindset you have. Once you have that, that is the most valuable part. That is worth billions of dollars right there. So if you lose everything, you're going to get right back on the horse and you're going to do it all over again. Well, that's where the fear comes in because if you don't have the skill set or if you don't realize that the internal knowledge or wisdom that you have now is the value that will create external money or wealth like that's where people fall into fear mm -hmm. it's because they don't have the knowledge or the know-how right so it is an, an investment and even if you do nothing with it learning from it it's a learning tax mm -hmm. how much do people pay for college right and how much do, or money does that earn them they right. wind up in debt for like 30 years Mm -hmm. Right. But if you could invest in self-education, invest a quarter of that into self-education. Mm -hmm. Even if you do nothing with it, you become the person who can earn a return on that investment. Mm -hmm. Like it's all about the return. It's about your potential, you know?
So, you know, like your mechanic, right? I don't change my own oil, but if I don't have someone, a specialist who knows what they're doing to help me with my vehicle, like it's going to break down. Mm -hmm. Right. So most people are doing that with their body. They just, they just try to do it themselves and they, you know, Oh, I'll watch YouTube. Like, really? You're going to watch YouTube, you know, anyway, we could get off on a whole tangent there, but yeah, I mean, it's, it really is about the return that you're making on yourself. Like the, even Warren Buffett said, the best investment you can make is in yourself, right. in your own skill set. Um, so yeah, that I totally believe in that, but yeah, start by investing your time and attention and energy. If you don't have any money right now and you can't afford a high-end program, invest in 10 ideas a day, invest in reading, right? Invest in moving your body, getting physically stronger. Like you can do that right now. You don't have to sign up for anything. You can just start right now. Start where you are. Yep. All right. That was very good on the uh, idea muscle, 10 ideas a day and goal setting. I mean, goal setting. yep. Images well, uh, of the mind expressed is your life experience, yep. <laughs> right? So yeah. And, we'll, and, and if anyone wants any, you know, wants to talk further or like have your ideas in the, into the chat, that's good. Um, notepad, N O tepd.com notepad without the a that's where you can sign up it's free they don't they don't have any ads or anything um but you can just put your 10 ideas a day into that and like share with the community share with other people who are doing 10 ideas um see their ideas um but yeah it's 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 a fun practice and it makes you feel abundant it taps into your own internal abundance because you know that any little thing that comes up for every one problem you have you're gonna have 10 ideas to solve it Mm -hmm. that's a really good ratio to be living in because now you're excited for problems. Now you're excited. Now you're going to have upgraded problems. You're going to have the next level problems of wherever you're trying to get to that, that place has problems too. It's just, which problems do you want? You want poor people problems or you want rich people problems? <laughs> you know, like I'll take rich people problems, right? You want healthy problems or you want, you know, weak problems, sarcopenia and osteoporosis problems. <laughs> like, no, you want to have, you know, strength problems, maybe a little, little tightness. So you got to do some yoga or do go for a walk and get loosened up, get some blood flow going, you know, yeah. like it's just different problems. So choose your problems and then just commit to becoming that person. Mm -hmm. so. And we're going to keep going over this stuff. Like, even though this is today's topic, we're still going to reiterate um, probably almost every topic, just a little bit into this, because it's important. Yeah. Your goal setting is pretty much the most important thing you can do in your mindset. So we'll always go over the stuff over and over again. It all works together. Yeah. You know, it all, all works together. Whatever we think about is what we become. Mm -hmm. So it's like, if you've been thinking about something, you already are thinking your way into it. It might just take a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. You might just have a different learning style. You might, you know, need to see things or hear it a certain amount of times before it finally clicks into place. So repetition, right? Repetition is mother of skill. Mm -hmm. So just keep, keep working it, keep doing it. But that's where that repetition of making ideas, getting your idea muscle built, doing your X3 every day, putting in clean, healthy fuel. So you have optimal uh, efficiency when you're running your energy systems. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the, that's the way to go. So <laughs> hope this helps, you know, hope this yeah. helps. Leave a comment. I hope we could get some engagement. Uh, yeah, guys, after we online. post these videos in the mastermind group and, yeah. and my regular uh, uh, fitness and accountability group, just always, always ask questions, always get the discussion going because we will answer these questions. This is yeah. for you guys. This is a service for you guys. So always ask questions. Yeah. Any topic you want to see, put it in here. We'll discuss yeah. it. Any questions you have, something you want to go deeper on, you know, maybe one line we said in this gets, gets the spark lit. So we go, you know, go dive deeper on a whole video on it. So mm -hmm. let us know, but yeah, we're here. We're here to help. All right. Cool. Well, we're out today. We'll talk to you guys soon. Awesome. Thanks, Tyler.